On September 12th, an Israeli Knesset party approved a plan to annex all of the occupied territories that would erase Palestine completely. This is considered an extremist solution to a conflict that has spanned decades and the so-called key to peace in the Middle East. But how do Jewish Israeli citizens feel, those who are not in the government or living in illegal settlements? Last year, I traveled around the West Bank to release a series for the Empire Files on the plight of Palestinians, featuring their voices and stories. But I also went to speak to average Israelis in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem. We're here in Zion Square in Jerusalem, which the government has actually declared to rename Tolerant Square. And we're just going to ask everyday Israelis what they think about the situation. Uh, you're American. Where are you from and why did you come here? Uh, I'm from New York um, and I came here with my family when I was younger to make Aliyah um, because it was always my parents' dream to come to Israel because we're religious. So are you American? Yes. Oh, cool. Why you, uh, when did you move here and why? I moved here 11 years ago. Uh, my family moved here because um, this is the country of the Jewish people and the future of the Jewish people and uh, we want to be here. How old are you guys? 18. We're 18, 18 years 18. old. Now we're here in Israel taking a leadership course and we're going to the army for a few months to see how life's here. And then we hope to bring back some of this knowledge to our youth movements. So you're like an internship with the army? It's about two months and they show you everything about the army. Israel is a great place. It's a nice place. You should come and visit. Uh, like, I love Israel and I feel safe here. All that misconceptions are not, not true. Like, is, is, there's not people uh, with knives every day, and there's not, pe uh, I don't know, people exploding. Palestinians? Yeah. yeah. No, but pretty much the life here is really good. For people living here, it's just normal to see people in the army walking around with guns, and you feel completely safe and protected. I feel like we know who the threat is, and it's not coming from anyone random, as opposed to in the rest of the world, that it could be anyone. Um, here we know we know who our enemy is, and we know that they are out to get us. Who is the enemy? Who is the enemy? That's, uh, that's a very good question. I don't think it's specifically any nation. I think it's the people that um, are so interested in being politically correct that they won't actually go after the, the people that are trying to cover things up. I think that, that, that the Islam is a, it's a very bad disease. Not, uh, not just for Israel, for uh, all around the world, we, we can see it. They think they, they all have to be Islam. If you're not Islam, they will kill you. <clears throat> a lot of Americans don't really understand what Israel is like. We hear a lot of things in the news, a lot of people are sympathizing with the Palestinian plight. Um, can you talk about what it's like to kind of live in this situation? Uh, first of all, it's very hard. I also am an organization, it's called La Hava, it's against the Jews who marry Arabs. Did you say the organization was, did what again? We, the, the organization is, the, the thing of it is to, that Jews should marry Arabs. Shouldn't marry Arabs, why do you feel strongly about that? Because Jews is a special nation that God gave it to the Jews and we don't want Jews to get mixed up with it, together with a different nation. I think Israelis have to take over and uh, they have to kick them, uh, kick them away. It will be much better not to, not to kill them, just to, to go back to, to Arab countries. You can't deal with these people, there's no need to try, there's no need to talk to them. What we can do is when they, they, they do enough harm, we retaliate. That's war and that's the situation that any Jew who lives in Israel has to deal with. Okay. <laughs> וכל מחבל שעושה פיגוע צריך להרוג אותו, צריך להרוג את המחבלים, ואז הם יפחדו ולא יעשו לנו בעיות, והכל יהיה בסדר. הם יהיו בכפרים שלהם, אנחנו נחיה פה, לא צריך להיות ביחד, והכל בסדר. אני חושב גם שכל ערב שעושים את הטרוריזם, אנחנו צריכים להרוג אותו, ולא בגלל שהוא ערב, אלא בגלל שהוא טרוריסט. אני חושב שאתה צריך גם להרוג את המשפחה, כי זה כל מתחיל עם החינוך. אני חושב שזה... Education. 
whatever they teach the kids, the kids does, you know, it's families. I think that we need to... No, tell me the words, I don't... No, tell me the words, I don't... I don't know, I don't know how to translate it really well. I think we should give them a country. If you're doing any problem, you just go in there to give them a country and then it's going to be a war between countries, you know? If they're going to throw rockets, we're going to throw one big one and done. I don't think there's any answer to it. There's only one way, to, like, I would carpet bomb them. You would That's, carpet bomb them? It's the, only, it's the only way you could deal with it. Like, or, or try to stop them a different way. It, it never worked. You mean all Arabs or Gaza or...? I, I believe that they... Like, I hope to believe they're, they're not, but I do think they are. Because I never... I don't, I don't trust them. You can't trust them. And that's the only way I believe that. The only, the only way is just to stop it completely. I think that uh, we miserable the, the Arabs uh, make a big whim and uh, we need to kill the Arabs. <laughs> no. Okay. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, there is also. Uh, the Jewish civilian, uh, civilians that ate Arabs, yeah, I, I'm not saying, but we have also people that like the Arabs and everything, like uh, Smolanim. I think another thing uh, that the Jews should have rights to hate them. I think we have the right to hate them. I don't, I don't see a reason why not. I, I wouldn't trust any of them. To better understand this mentality, I also talked to Ronnie Barkin, a Jewish-Israeli citizen who grew up in the country and is now an ardent critic of the notion of a Jewish state. Like anyone growing up in Israel, uh, I went through the whole indoctrination mechanism. And we are being trained to be soldiers from kindergarten, literally from kindergarten. The moment I realized, I, I managed to sort of overcome that indoctrination, then everything became very clear because the situation is crystal clear. Uh, one of the main successes of Israeli propaganda is to convince the world that the situation is complicated. But it's far from being complicated. It's probably the least complicated conflict in the world today. Um, and, and it's all about basically those who have the power, those who oppress and subjugate and, and uh, tread over the indigenous people of the land who have been oppressed and subjugated and expelled from their land. And this is what it's about. The situation here is not very different other than the way it is perceived in the world and among Israeli society themselves. They like to perceive themselves as some being something else, as being you know, liberal and progressive and all of that. And I also thought of myself as such, until I realized that actually, you know, this is not the case. The case is very clear, and I'm not on the right side of history. And, um, and that's when, you know, the moment I managed to overcome this type of brainwashing, then the rest was very easy. So this one is all about creating a place which is for one select group and only that. It's not only the fact that they wanted to take over to usurp the land and the resources and all of that. It's also about this exclusive nature of the place, that this is ours and only ours. And even any, any Palestinian being born in Israel, even, the, even if they're Israeli citizens, is already regarded as some sort of a threat to the state. Mm -hmm. The need to segregate, the need to separate and not to interact with Palestinians is part of Israeli identity. So we have to understand that Israeli identity depends on denying Palestinian identity and denying either the existence of Palestinians altogether or at the very least denying their uh, identity, their culture and so on. And also, right after the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, right after the Palestinians uh, were expelled from their homes and became refugees, the very next thing that happened was that there was a concerted effort of mass looting of books and other uh, cultural artifacts from Palestinian homes, which was led by the uh, National Library in Israel. So, so it's for a reason that when we say existence is resistance for Palestinians, this is true. Just by very existing on their land, this is an act of resistance in itself. Even more so when they actually claim their rights, claim their identity, do cultural work, like produce Palestinian culture, that is an act of war. 
after learning a lot in Jewish history of, and Israel history, um, I've like seen that people make a big deal out of on about a lot of different areas. But if you look back, like correct me if I'm wrong, if you look back at the history, we the the areas these places are like really rightfully ours. Like if it was any other country that would have. T conquered these places or taken over these places, nobody would make a big deal. It's just because it's Israel and there's anti-Semitism and everything. They kicked us uh, about 2,000 years ago and we came back. We have Jerusalem. We build every stone here. Mm -hmm. Every stone, 3,000 years ago. Over here, this, all is 3, years this ago. is the city of David. 2,500 years ago. All history of the Jewish people and the Islam doesn't have history at all in this country. I think that they should actually look at a history book and, and look at the progression of history and who occupied Israel go further back. So if it, if it could be that the Palestinians occupied Israel, that's true, but who occupied that before that? And if you keep going back to the times of like the, the Bible, you'll see that it was indeed um, the Jews that did occupy. Palestinian, where are the Palestinian people during 4,000 years under the Ottoman, Ottoman? Answer me. Well, I'm the journalist here, so ah. I don't... And how God punished is the sins by other people. He said, he sent the Nazis he sent, and now he sent Palestinian. Okay. But it's really rightfully ours if you look at the history and at like the wars, and we didn't even start a lot of the wars, and it, we we conquered these places rightfully, like it's ours. We brought the settlements in the, by Gaza, you know, all the all the Gush Katif strip. I gave Gaza back. Gaza, yeah. Well, we gave part of Israel. It's not uh, that uh, it's not Gaza. It's it's uh, 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 we do things for peace. I think that the Jews came here. They took a, they took this land, and this is our land now. And I don't think they should be here. No Arabs, like Arabs, they want. We gave them Gaza. So they should go live there quietly if they want. They should go back to Iraq. To, I don't know to wherever they want. But this is a place. This is a place that God gave it to the Jews and. We don't want the Arabs to be here. And before they accuse anyone of occupying, they should actually look back and, and look at history. So you wouldn't call any of this occupied territory? Um, no. I think that whatever deals were made and wars were fought, they took the land. And that's, that's the way things work. I mean, would you call America occupied by Americans because the British used to rule? The people who kicked the Jews out of Israel were the Arabs. A thousand four hundred years later, we come back. Now, I'm not saying that we can blame the people living here for what happened, but you gotta accept that that's some kind of divine justice, that their great-great-great-great-grandfathers kicked my great-great-great-grandfather out of here, and then we come back, and all of a sudden they're like, well, no, we don't want it, it's not fair. They took the land from us, not the Romans, and not the Persians, and not the Byzantines. It was Arabs who took this land from Jews. And so, yeah, we came back and we took what was rightly, rightfully ours. Uh, oh, yeah. Besides the fact that before the Jews came to here in the late 1800s, early 1900s, it was like a barren land. Like, because the Jews came here, we, it started to, like, flourish or whatever and become actually like people start planting things and making settlements and all these places if the Jews never came here then it'd be this in the same place it was like 200 years ago or not where it is today and so we like the Jews came here and they started making it better for also the Arabs and they only start to be an issue because the Arabs started to make it more of an issue how many people think like you uh, what is the state of the left wing within Israeli society so the people who think like me are, are a negligible few and uh, I would argue that there is no left in Israel and never ever existed. What you have are those uh, self-proclaimed leftists, um, liberal Zionists, who basically speak the language of peace and human rights and, all, and so on in order to sugarcoat their racism and supremacy. And they speak a very different language than the acting government, for example, because the acting government is 
clearly a right-wing government, government, they are shameless about their racist uh, attitudes and so on. They say this is ours and only ours. Many of them are decent enough to say, yes, there was the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, and that's a good thing. The problem is that, is that we haven't finished the job, that there are still Palestinians left in Palestine. With the other type of Zionists, with the so-called left in Israel, we cannot even agree about the basic facts. But for them, in order to feel that they are both Zionists and moral at the same time, they have to keep lying to themselves all the time, every moment of every day. So, so they have perfected this whole discourse of lies in order to lie to themselves and also in order to lie to the international community, in order to justify their existence here in that. I think the occupation does have a role, a big role and important. I don't think there should be no occupation at all, but in the occupation things need to be more human. Do you get called a leftist a lot? Yeah, yeah, and I am a leftist. <laughs> is, le is leftist a slur yes. sometimes? Yes, it is. It is not a, good, um, not a good way to be called in Israel. Israel doesn't want to compromise on security. They have to do a blockade. They have to kind of cut this off. It's, you know, it's ridiculous what people have to go through there, but it's also ridiculous what we have to do to keep ourselves safe. We don't want to fight with them. But if they ask for it, they will get it. And we're much stronger, much stronger. We are, we are very, behave very gently and, and mor morally, very gently with them. It could get a lot worse, is what yeah, you're saying. If, if, if the Russians was here, two days, they will kill all of them. If the Americans will be here, they will kill them two days. They don't care about human rights. They don't care about nothing. Israel's holding back. Very, very. But it's war, and civilians get killed in war, and it's a horrible, you know, on their side, less on our side, but at the same time, it's, we put money into protecting ourselves. Well, look, the refugees, are, is, it's, their situation is horrible, but no other nation in the world gets the refugee status that Palestinians do. The Palestinians, third generation people, are still considered refugees. You know, I had friends that were Canadian, they went on their passports, they wanted to see what the refugee camps were, they wanted to see what it was all about. They came back, they said, it's nothing what I imagined it. Like you know? better than they imagined? Or? They said people were driving around with nice cars, people had nice houses, villas, things like that. They thought people were being oppressed, like, you know, like living in tents. It's like they probably were, like maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, like in the past. For them, in order for them to be Zionist and moral, in order for them to have a Jewish and democratic state, they needed, first of all and foremost, to create a Jewish majority by force, by driving away the indigenous people from their land. And this is how the state was founded. And immediately afterwards, they created a whole legal system that will make sure that those who have been expelled will never be allowed back, and those who remained on their land, because not everyone was expelled, will never be equal citizens. Unfortunately, what we hear on mainstream media, this so-called discourse or so-called debate between the right and the left is about that. It's about do we want a large Israel which is Arab free or do we want a small Israel which is Arab free? This is the debate that's taking place. Last question, there's this whole international movement of leftists and activists who want to boycott Israel for human rights violations. Being here, seeing that, and what do you just think about that? I think the BDS movement, the leaders of the BDS movement, or everyone that thinks that Israel is bad, if they if they can, if they they should read up about the topic, the other side, and they should come here and see how everybody's comfortable. People right now they're looking at, at Israel and they're calling it an apartheid state, and Israel is not an apartheid state. There's places. I mean, my family from five generations ago, they were from Jenin. You can't find one Jew in Jenin right now. I mean, it's, it's totally Jew-free, so if you want to think about a racist apartheid state, it seems it's more, in my opinion, coming from their side. And just, just a response, I guess, to kind of this international movement, the BDS movement, and also the movement that says settlements are illegal, they're encroaching on Palestinian land. Can you respond to that accusation? Um, I think the response would be two-part. The first part would be very simple. Nobody gives Turkey problems for their settlements in Cyprus. It's an anti-Semitic thing. To the, maybe they don't know that they hate Jews, but they give us so much trouble. The UN only talks about Israel. What about North Korea? What about Russia? Then the second thing would be to say is that... Even from the UN? Completely from the UN. I mean, I mean, come on. You're talking about that we're worse than the North Korean dictatorship? Like, nobody in the world thinks that. So those people in the UN and all these peace activists, I mean, look, 
she's a woman, she's walking around however she wants here in Israel, right? There's female genital mutilation in Egypt, not very far from here. Why don't people talk about that? I think that like, we should have more, not more rights. I think we, we have rights to build more houses for our citizens. And like, a lot of things that Israel gets criticism for, other countries will never get it. אני רוצה להגיד פה לראש ממשלה פה בארץ, בישראל, אין מצב שיהיה פה שלום בארץ. אי אפשר לעשות איתם שלום, הם תמיד שונאים אותנו. אם אי אפשר לעשות שלום והמצב ככה לא יכול להישאר, אז צריך לטפל בהם בדרכים אחרות, אין מה לעשות. are totally irrelevant to the question of how do we change the situation. Did it matter what white people think about apartheid in South Africa at the time? The question is how do we end apartheid and how do we end Israeli crimes? You know, every Israeli official will say, will claim to speak on behalf of the Jewish people and will even demand of Palestinians to recognize Israel's right to be a Jewish state and so on. I don't recognize Israel's right to be a Jewish state because it is not Jewish by religion. It is only Jewish by supremacy. Israel is Jewish just like South Africa was white, in the exact same context, with the exact same meaning. And uh, obviously any decent person around the world should oppose that, because it is inherently racist, and more than that. And it also happens to be very much against international law. So when we talk about Israel as an apartheid state, even though it's not exactly like South Africa, it, neatly falls under the legal definition of the crime of apartheid, which is a very serious crime, one of the few crimes that is regarded as a crime against humanity, which means that all countries of the world are obligated to, to, to do something against it, not to, not to be complicit in that. And what we're coming and saying is, no, there are basic fundamental Palestinian rights that must be respected. One of them is ending of the occupation, of course, but that's not the main issue, that's part of the issue. The other two rights are equality inside Israel proper, or what we call Palestine 48, and the rights of the refugees which have been expelled from there since the very foundation of the State of Israel. These are fundamental rights, they must be respected. Uh, and now we can debate, we can argue about how do we implement these rights. I'm willing to discuss that. I'm not willing to discuss, you know, should we have equality or not. This is not negotiable.